There are over 2,500 modules available in Foundry. Which ones should you pick? In this video, I'll be going over the top 10 modules that I personally believe are the most important modules to have in Foundry Virtual Tabletop. I have kept these modules somewhat system agnostic. They should work for both D&D and Pathfinder 2E. I'll be doing system specific module videos in the future. So remember to hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see that in a future video. I'll be going through what each module does, how to use each module and the settings that I recommend for each of these modules. This is of course, assuming you already have the three modules every game master should have. Check that video up above. These modules will not only enhance your gameplay, but they'll make sure that every session you run from now on will be just that much better than it was before. Let's get started with module number one, Monk's Token Bar. Have you ever wanted to know at a quick glance what your player's AC or passive perception was? What about their speed or their hero points? Check this out. With Monk's Token Bar, you can have all these stats visible on your screen. It also has a bunch of little buttons that allow you to do a lot of things here. This first row is used to restrict movement for players, whether they can move or they can't move, combat movement only. I really don't use this part of the module, but I thought I'd show you anyway. The next part's probably a little cooler. You can request a role from a player character. For example, I can select Mauricio here. And I can even request a theory check from her. I can even put the DC publicly, show it, and click on the request button. I can have her roll the theory via the interface in chat. And it'll tell you whether you succeeded or failed, or even degrees of success, like crit fail and crit success. The way I like to use this is have the group roll a collective stealth check for the entire party, which is secret to them, but I can see it and then I can get the average DC at the bottom there, which is pretty cool. Ooh, a 13, that's not a great group stealth check. You can do contested rolls by having two people roll an athletics check, for example, and it'll tell you at the end who wins. And lastly, you can even award experience to them. Let's say they do a small quest for 30 experience and you can click on assign for that and they can click on their own add button and it'll award experience at the top of their character sheet. Let's go to settings because I bet you're wondering where speed and hero points are in the base module. The main settings I've changed are edit stats and then check these two new out attributes.speedtotalresources.hero points and then the corresponding icon which you can just filter out a star for hero points. I'm kind of dumb and just realized you can put colors on each one of these, what? No way. Other settings, if you're doing D&D, you can click on the show inspiration button instead of messing around with the stats thing. Do this for sure. And you can use the actor portrait instead of the token image. That's what it looks like with the portrait. Also, I'm gonna change AC to white. There we go, that looks way better. Do you think passive perception should be the color red? What colors do you see in your mind? Let me know in the comments below. Let's go ahead and move on to the next module in the list, Molinet. Has this ever happened to you? Make the boat invisible <clears throat> again. Yeah, I, you know, I felt like uh, it just, it looked better this way to be an invisible glass boat. So don't forget where we parked it because. Oh, there's the boat. <laughs> I just spilled oh. the magic. All right, how to pull a boat out of thin air and make that boat uninvisible. Watch. This is a modular module. The one I am using it for is gonna be called Molinet Tiles, but you can select any of the you wish. Your mileage will vary on which Molinet sub module you'd like. There's a bit of a catch to this module though and the reason it's not number one on my list even though it's one of the most important modules I'm showing you today is because it's paid. Let me explain how this works and why it's worth it. Let's say there's a little bit of a rumbling in the dungeon and rubble pops up right there. So you open up Molinet, type in rubble and drag and drop it onto the board. There you have it. There's your rubble that you can put quickly in live play. Let's say now, for example, you want to put a broken cart or wagon, open up Molinet, type in wagon, and there you go. You 
can put any number of wagons you want and there's a lot to choose from based on the creators you sub on Patreon to. If you're asking yourself, well, I could do this without Molinet during live play, it's gonna be a lot more difficult finding these assets. So this is the most useful for when you're actually live and trying to bring something in that is reacting to the role play on the screen. In this example, the party wants to camp, so we can pull out a campsite, for example, and voila, this is the way I use Molinet. You'll have to subscribe to certain Patreons to get the best bang for your buck, but there are free assets that you can look at if you don't want to pay for anything, those do work. I've subscribed to Tom Cardos and Venatus Maps. Not a sponsor, just they have a lot of assets. I don't mess around with the Molinet settings too much. It's actually plug and play. Do remember though, that you'll have to link your Patreon and sign in with Patreon to make sure the cloud is enabled in Foundry. So once your Patreon's linked, then you can go to the Molinet icons or tiles or whatever it is and start dragging and dropping. If you found this video useful so far consider liking and subscribing also join my discord down below we can talk foundry and you can even join a paid pathfinder 2e game let's move on to the next module on the list forian's quest log is my third module on this list forian's quest log is a great way to organize all available quests for your players in one easy to access module inside of Foundry. You and your players can look at this quest log by going to the journal tab of Foundry and going to the quest log at the bottom of the screen, which all the quests that are in progress, available, or even failed will show up. To add a quest as a game master, I would go to the inactive tab, add a quick quest. I'm gonna add artist here. That would be the quest giver. Yes, the new quest would be Artist wants pets, for example, and you can set up a description here. Artist is currently sad and wants to be pet. You can set up objectives like pet artist, for example. You can make it visible or invisible and even add multiple objectives and reveal them when you see fit. Lastly, you can give a reward for petting artists. You can drag and drop, for example, 100 gold pieces, unlock it whenever they get the reward, it means they can easily drag and drop it into their inventory. There are a bunch of settings here that I necessarily don't mess around too much with. I do allow my players to create quests because I trust them. It does require the create journal core permission though. Remember that you can always show your players the quest log by hitting this button at the top. That way we all remember what quests there were in the game. Let's move on to the next module. This module's called Break Time, and I think it's extremely useful. This module gives you two things right off the bat. The first thing is a little coffee cup icon for a player to click on whenever they're stepping away for a minute. It gives you a little notification in chat, which by the way, you can change. And when you hit the coffee cup again, it says, I'm back. This is really good for somebody wanting to step away for a moment without disturbing the flow of the game. The real usefulness though comes in the break time button here in the bottom left of the screen. When you hit it, it does a bunch of stuff. First and foremost, it sends a list of players here that allow you, it doesn't show it right now, but they can click on leave or I'm back. The second thing is it stops the music from playing automatically. When you hit it, it resumes the music, which is super nifty. It does make this little noise advising people that it's break time. And lastly, and the most useful, you can set a break time counter for 15 minutes and it'll start counting down what the time left remaining in the break is. I love break time. It allows me to see who's back from break and who's not. It's really useful for long sessions or even a normal session, honestly. Who doesn't take a break? Really quickly settings that'll pause the game automatically. You can change the away message and the back message. And lastly, you can set up a break playlist. Music for the break if you really want to do that and then add a sound effect for when the break is over. This next module is called Polyglot and it allows you to speak in different languages in game. Let me quickly explain this module. It's super simple. If this player character, for example, only speaks certain languages like Draconic or Russian. Russian is a language in Pathfinder. You can select Draconic, they can say hello, for example, and only players that speak Draconic would be able to understand them. So Simone, who does not speak Draconic, will only see this gibberish in chat. This is a very useful module for immersion, although be careful that your players don't get frustrated when they can't understand what's being written out in chat. 
My biggest use for Polyglot is when I have a monster trying to speak to them in a language they don't understand, I type it out. That way I don't have to check the languages one by one individually. If somebody understands it, they'll let me know. Remember to uncheck the box if you want the player characters to be able to understand the monster. For example, if it's emoting or saying or doing something they do understand, this usually gets your system's languages automatically. I've never had to configure anything up. It just does it by itself. The settings here are aren't that massive. You can check them out yourself. I've never been through them, being perfectly honest with you. It's just worked out of the box for me, but you can check them out here. All right, let's move on to the next module. Damage log. This is module number six. Sometimes you just want to know where that damage came from in or out of combat. This module's super simple. Let's say the trolls hurt for 15 hit points. It'll just show up in chat. It took 15 damage. It gives you the old value and the new value. If you accidentally reduce a player character's hit points to zero, for example, and forgot what hit points they were at for, you can now go back to what they were at before and heal them back up. Sorry, Mittal. This module settings is pretty simple. I recommend you don't use a separate damage log tab because it's kind of cumbersome and annoying. I don't allow players to view the damage log because I don't want them to see the hit point values of enemies. The best reason to install this module is if you accidentally damage or heal somebody and don't know what value they were at before, this module will help you figure that out. Token Z is also another plug and play module that you set it and forget it. Right now I have multiple size tokens on the board. Now what Token Z does is automatically put the smallest token on top. That way I can't accidentally put a large token on top of a small one and it'll actually automatically stack being smart in its stacking. So this way I can always select the troll, always select Ashka and no monster is going to override one of these smaller tokens. This module literally doesn't have settings. It's just plug and play and it's a great module and it's essential. You need this module if you've had trouble with tokens. All right, let's move on to the next module. Tokenizer is a great module for making tokens out of your artwork in Foundry. Tokenizer allows you to make a token out of an image in Foundry. Basically, Tokenizer is what's allowing me to make these really cool pop-out tokens. There is a video here that you can check out by someone else that I found that shows you how to use tokenizer. Tokenizer is really cool, but I don't want to extend this video in particular super long, so we're just going to move on to the next module. Defred's Droppables is another simple, easy to use, plug and play, and extremely useful module that I'm going to show you how to use right now. We have four familiars, Hopker, Medelli, Robbie, and Sprog. If I drag it on the board, I can choose how to drop it. I prefer randomly. Choose the elevation and it will drop it. That's it, all four of them are on the board. You don't have to manually drag them one by one. That's it, that's the module. Couple of settings here. I recommend you switch from dialogue to randomly so you don't have to click the button every time. That's it. I will say this module was super useful before they added a party token in Pathfinder. I'm not sure if they have a party token in D&D, but if you have your D&D party in a folder and you use the Fred's droppables, it'll just put them on the map. Super simple, super easy. Let me know in the comments below if D&D has these newfangled updates that Pathfinder has. And last but not least, this is one of the most essential modules. Glad you stuck around till the end, huh? Check this out. This allows you to press control space to type anything instead of going into the compendium. We can type in, for example, potion of healing. Oh, potion of farting. It's called healing potion in Pathfinder. I keep forgetting. Anyway, you can find all the healing potions without having to go to the top right and look in your compendium. This might be just easier to search by pressing control space. I use it all the time. Control space is my jam. I don't like going to the compendium in the top right there. So, you know, check it out. You might like it. So you've seen my top 10 best modules to have that are system agnostic for Foundry, but have you seen these seven quality of life modules that'll make your life that much better in Foundry as well? Check this video out and like and subscribe.